Hi, my name is Eric Gitter, and um, I've changed this assignment slightly to fit my needs. The, the reason for it is that I'm planning on pre presenting to our staff and giving the Applied and Essential teacher some pointers and some helpers on how to become a bit more um, astute or, or receive some help uh, for those challenging classes. I'm going to break this off into two different YouTube clips. You can follow along, uh, you can watch them, or you can just scroll through my slideshow, but I feel it won't make nearly as much sense. Okay, um, so let's get going here. The This is kind of the outline of my assignment. <clears throat> the, come on now. The, it, the, the, the original presentation will take about 40 minutes. This video will not. Um, I teach in the Upper Grand District School Board. Um, we have 11 secondary schools, 65 elementary ones, um, and it, it serves about 34,000 students. So it's not a massive board, but it's it's a, a fair size board anyhow. Um, the major city is Guelph, and then we have the County of Wellington and Dufferin and so forth. I myself teach in Fergus, so Center Wellington District High School, we're the home of the Falcons. Um, I had to take this, it, it would be snowy right now, I found this one online. I'm going to start the presentation off with something called Plickers. If you've never used Plickers before, this is what it is. Um, in advance, I would have created some files. So here you see I'm logged in um, and I've come up with some questions. So let's say you've done a Kahoot before. Yeah, I've come up with some questions like, uh, what is Arrow? So answer A might be a delicious chocolate bar, a digital blah, 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 whatever, right? And then each person in the crowd would have received one of these cards. These are called Plickers cards. And you can see they have an A, B, C, or D on them. So each person has a different form. But when I, answer, when I ask those questions, and if you feel the answer is A, you would point your A to the ceiling, and I would walk around and I would scan, with my, using my cell phone, um, your answers. And they would then be recorded on my screen because it's hooked up to the data projector and my laptop. Okay, so that's kind of how that works. It's kind of a, an engaging way for me to see, hey, what does my audience already know? And it, it it's also a new format of, of, of using something interesting. So I've done this with my students. It went over reasonably well. It's kind of like a Kahoot, but different. They don't need to have cell phones for it. All right. This is the rationale for my presentation. You can kind of see here, this is taken from StatsCan in uh, 2012. The effect of disability in educational experiences for adults, but it's actually for aged 15 or older. So high school range, um, that's pretty much what I was looking at here. And what I found was really disconcerting, uh, disconcerting is over 41% of students discontinued their education because of their disability. There are other frightening stats on here, but that one kind of struck me. All right, so I tried to dig a little bit deeper and I looked at met and unmet needs for education. So here are all the unmet needs. So I wanted to take a look and say, okay, audio ebooks, devices, I can help with that. Record or note taking, I can help with that. Specialized software. If you're a Google board, I feel your board's actually already helping you with that. I'm not going to touch modified course curriculum or, or teacher aid or tutors because those are powder kegs. You don't, you don't want to do that. Anyways, I will tackle the extended time as well. So our coming back to our school, we have 310 out of uh, 1,251 students that are IEP. So that's maybe one in four. So you could have every four student in your class have an IEP, but more likely if you, are, you have a university class, you would have maybe one or two. If you're having an essential or applied level class, your, that percentage could be as high as 75 to 100%. So this is what a teacher usually gets at the start of the semester, um, the IEP of a student. So you can tell the student has a, a communications learning disability and suffers from or has attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. All right. Then they give me all these accommodations. I, I don't even know what they mean. I have no idea. So I'm already behind the eight ball. Um, so what I've done is I've kind of linked in the explanation of accommodations. So when I look at that, it gives me a nice little idea of what they actually mean. So the definitions of them as put forth by the Ministry of Education. So there are all the instructional accommodations explained. 
and then it moves into the environmental accommodations explained and then finally the assessment accommodations explained. So I'll, I'll look at one. So one that teachers sometimes uh, struggle with is, oh, look at there, extra time. Okay, so what does that mean? Seven minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes? Well, it means double. So however long the rest of the class gets, you get double that amount of time. Okay, so that's pretty good. So I already know more. Um, I understand the IEP a little bit better, which is good. I haven't gotten out of my seat yet. All I've done is followed my link, so that's, that's all right. Here's number two, Teacher's Gateway for Special Education. It's a really good site, so let's, let's go there for a second. So I want to know more about my, my struggling learner. And here you can see their student needs. So let's show some of these student needs. Oh, look at that, anger and frustration management. There you are, all different strategies that I might be able to use specifically for ang angry or frustrated students. Good stuff. Usually there are more. There might be some links along there as well that you could follow. So all right, that's that's another good place to go to. Um, remember my previous student by IPRC, he was determined LD. So let's look on here. What does that tell me? Oh, look at that. All the different strategies that I might be able to click on it, for that student that might help. So here are the Ontario Ministry of Education definitions. Good stuff. All right. So again, I might be able to use that. Let's get rid of get, get out of here again if I wanted more information. The last website that I'll guide you towards to kind of fill in some background gaps is called LD Online, the Educator's Guide to Learning Disabilities and ADHD. Oh my, that's almost geared towards that original IEP that I that I looked at there. So let's take a look at this here. And what I like about this website. And I'll warn you, this is not a, a Canadian one, it's a it's an American run one, um, but that's totally fine. It gives you all these different topics, um, but it doesn't just deal with strategies for an LD student. It also talks about, hey, what about parents? How do I talk to parents about this? Um, also, what about this testing? I don't understand what percentile means or, or if I fall into a range. Maybe I can get some information here because if I don't understand that, the real testing information is useless. Okay, so again, a really useful website. You could spend days in here. Um, if you want to. Now, this is what our board itself is doing um, slightly differently from previous years. The, the original model was that you would look and you would have a student in your class that has a SIA claim, a laptop claim, which is great. Then they would receive three or four sessions throughout the course of the semester to become better at that. That's really good for that student it's not really that good for anybody else, right? So if we're talking about equity, um, it's a little bit skewed. So let's take a look at, get out of here. Let's take a look at how they're kind of changing it. So moving forward, let's, let's kind of skip ahead a wee bit. So the training model still consists of 100 minutes, um, kind of split into of that student that has the SIA claim receiving training. But then it gets interesting. The second part of it is better. The SIA trainer then comes into your classroom to educate not just that student on a lesson, but the whole class. So I had a SIA trainer come into my classroom and she was super knowledgeable. I, I'm pretty tech savvy, but she gave me a number of different strategies that made life much easier for a struggling student. Okay, so glitches are going to happen. She could she talked me through it, walked me through it, and then I was able to use that information just not just for my uh, class that... I was teaching for my one P's, but for, for other kids as well. So it, it's kind of a trickle down effect, which is which is good stuff. All right, so if, if your board has SIA trainers, become part of it. It's it's really, really good. So let's kind of go back to our slideshow there. Let's talk about if you're not interested in that, what are some fix-its right in your classroom? Duplicated notes are sometimes the bane of your existence as a classroom teacher. So I've given you three points that you can maybe use. Number one, share it on Google Classroom. If your students have access to Chromebooks, laptops, wonderful. If they have access to a cell phone, wonderful. You can share all your notes right there on the Google Classroom. They can highlight digitally. They, you don't even need highlighters. No mess, no sword fighting with stuck together highlighters. You can just keep going. Turn handwritten notes into digital notes. So there are apps like Evernote where you're supposed to be able to take, where you're able to take pictures of something and then it turns it into a digital, um, 
a digital format for you. So I write on the board, student takes a picture, boom, you now have it as a digital format in your, in, in, on your computer or again your cell phone. The last one is a bit more old school, but duplicate paper. So your spec ed teacher or your contact should be able to get you some of that. We have a whole box of it in ours. And what it is is, I, Johnny, you have neat handwriting. Here, stick this paper underneath your note, write your note. Whenever Johnny's done, you now have two copies of it. You give the other copy to the student that needs duplicated notes, and boom, you don't have to run over to the photocopier every seven minutes in order to make a copy because you forgot to do it in the morning. All right, what, about, what else can we do? Easy fixes. Number two, get out of your seat. So this is a is this a link to a Washington Post article where a teacher spent two days as a student and is shocked about what she learns. I'll give you the shortened version. She never gets out of her seat. She's bored. She she's not engaged. So why not make students a bit more engaged? All right, easier said than done, right? How do we do that? Glad you asked. Oopsie, come on now. Um, you can make it in school activity breaks. So again, here's a website, and there are lots of them out there, um, that give you, what is there, 135 different in school breaks. Use one, use two, use ten. I don't know, start building these. Look at these, look, they're explained to you. They take about three to five minutes, and all of a sudden you have a rejuvenated classroom, a rejuvenated brain, just itching to give you more juicy information. Uh, it'll make your class more fun, it'll make the students have more fun, it's a win-win. The other thing you could do is just weave it straight into your classroom. So if you know what Four Corners is, Think Pair Share, Wall Graffiti, throw your answers. If you don't know what those are, Google them, alright? So Four Corners, you, you make, you stick a yes, a no, a yes maybe, a no maybe into the corner of your classroom and you pose some general question. Should we have abortion? Okay, um, And then have students go into their corners. You're going to get some discussion in those corners, but they're also getting out of their seat. And it's going to be a little bit more engaging than just sitting in your classroom, raise your hand, off you go. All these other ones, and there are many more. Basically, Google differentiated instruction, and you'll hit a whole gamut of things. Now, I'm going to pause my video here briefly because I need to jump over and create a new one because you can't do anything more than 15 minutes um, on a YouTube clip, so pardon me here.